Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing more 3D modeling in the 3D modular environment series that we're doing in Blender. So I'm going to quickly open up what we did in the last video. And we're working on this sci-fi corridor for part of the spaceship in my game. And we have this low wall and I think it's basically done we just threw a quick mirror modifier on this. So really we only model one side. So it's not all too unique, but there's some nice small details in there and I think it would hold up in my game. And that's all we want. So I think overall it looks pretty good. So I was thinking about moving on to this um, mid wall, I call it, in the hierarchy. And the mid wall starts at negative uh, 1.5 meters so that's the median I should say so in reality this is basically 0.5 meters tall so what I'm gonna do is reset the transforms and change that to 0.5 meters so now this is 0.5 meters tall fix that Okay, so this is good now. So now this is 2.5 meters tall. Okay, so now we know the mid wall is going to be 2.5 units out of the four units that make up the, the height of the entire wall. So now that we know that, there's going to have to be some type of window here. Um, like I said before, I don't have any of this already planned out. I'm more or less just coming up with this as I go. So I want the window to start about halfway up. So this is only point halfway up from the player's height, I mean. So the window needs to start at one. So basically, if I copy this player, scale Z 0.5 the window needs to start where the top of this cube intersects with the wall so right here okay so I'm gonna take this and I don't know what to make this right now um, it's really the only confusing part about this. I'm gonna drag that down just to give it a little extra room. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Yeah, so I don't know what to do with that. I guess for now, let's separate it. I guess we could start working on the window. And then make a duplicate of this mid wall. Like I said before, I make a lot of duplicates. So just in case I mess up on something, I have a spare version, you know? So that way I don't have to remake this whole wall. Because modeling is a destructive workflow. So a lot of the time, like control Z will only get you so far. It's hard to go back sometimes. And Blender only records like your last several steps. So sometimes you have to go back and restart from scratch. So it just helps to have some of these spare parts lying around. Okay, so I might make this like a case for some piping or something like that. And maybe some more cabinets. But I think I want it to look like. Okay, let's go to global. I think I want it to look like that. Okay, I'll delete that face. 
and delete those. And we'll just use another quick mirror modifier with clipping. Okay, so there's a couple things that we could do here. Let's just make a duplicate. So what I'm thinking is I could inset these, I can make some panels here, inset it, and then show some pipes running inside of the wall. Or if that looks too industrial though, and I want it to be a little, if I want the design to be a little bit more sleek, I could just make some nice cabinets like these. It's more so, I'm not sure what I'm going for. in that though I think that looks pretty cool I'm gonna merge that with this and then I'll separate it. So that way we can at least see what it looks like with the face weighted normals. Because any modifier on this object, once we control J and join it with this one, those modifiers would transfer over. So now you can see we have the weighted normals applied. And it also automatically checks the auto smooth in the normals. So that's pretty cool. Um. Yeah, I could control B. And control B again. And I'll delete all of these unused faces. Because nobody will ever be able to see these. At least that's the way I'll be designing my corridors. In some games, maybe. But from what I planned, I don't think anybody will be able to see those. So I can just delete those without having any problems. Okay, so now what I could do is put, just drop in two small um, sort of doors. The same style I did here. So I'm obviously going to put bevels on the edges so it looks nice with the face weighted normals. And I'll do that two times. Just because we can afford the extra geometry, so why not? Just one more time. And then let's merge all of these vertices to that final corner over there. Pretty easy. And there's probably a faster way to do it other than just right clicking and pressing merge vertices at last or whatever you want to do. But if there is, I don't 
currently know it, so <laughs> I just do it this way. And one more bevel to help improve the shading just a little bit. Okay. Cool. All right, that looks that looks really good. What I could do is make these like removable. So that I could make another variation of this wall where those panels aren't there and you can see what's underneath. I'm just not sure if that's necessary at this point. Hmm. I guess I'll just leave it the way it is. All right, so we can keep that end on there because it's a flat surface. All right, I'm going to grab this piece, duplicate it, and just drag it here. So now we have this geometry that we can reuse. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. P to um, separate the selection, and just so we can fix the rotation, I'm going to set origin to center of surface. And then I can rotate this where I want to. So rotate on the X until it's about flat. That looks good. Obviously, I'll have to check it up with this geometry. And there's a weird symmetry modifier. So let's get rid of that. I think that was throwing me off a little bit. All right, that looks good. And that looks good. All right, cool. So now I'm going to set the 3D cursor here. Uh, negative 0.5, set origin there. Mirror this. And apply. All right, so I don't know what's going on with that shading. So to see if I can possibly fix it, I'm going to select all these faces and scale it all together. 
And so now that guarantees that these planes are all perfectly flat. So, but the shading is still there. So I guess hopefully the textures will just um, cover it up later. Um, we'll see. It's not really too noticeable. Yeah, so I can live with that for now. Um, what do I want to do next? Oh, maybe this can actually come out. Yeah, I like that better. All right, so I think that's pretty much the low wall. So these two together will basically make up the low wall. That whole first unit of this four unit tall wall. So I'll just join them together. And they have the proper origin. It's pretty nice. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I can do. <laughs> it is tricky sure is tricky coming up with these designs um hmm. okay so i'll leave that the way it is for now so now we're working on the mid wall okay so i already have a copy of the mid wall so i'll go into edit mode Extrude it out. Extrude out again. And scale it down. Um, okay, so we'll drop in a loop cut in the middle and mark seams. And I'll just see to select all of this. Control L, delete that whole side. Delete any unseen faces. I think there's some on the back as well. And mirror. So that is basically the mid wall. <laughs> yeah, pretty fast. There's not going to be much detail because I'm going to be throwing a window into this. So yeah, not much detail there. Um. I could maybe put one one quick little split like that. Yeah, that works. And then let's join it up with this and control P. Call it mid wall again, but now it has the face weighted normals. Okay, so I'll call it mid wall basic. I'll shift you to duplicate that and hide it. Mid wall window cutout. I'll call the second one. Okay, cool. And so basically, we have to throw a window in here. But in order to see where the window should actually be, we need like a column placeholder to go here so that we can make sure the window is not intersecting with the column. So for now, I'm just going to block out what the column could possibly look like. 
just using one of the primitives from Blender. So I'll put it into the place it would be. And I think that looks wide enough for the column. It was good that we planned the cabinets around the column because we don't want the cabinets to intersect with it. That would be kind of weird. So I'll rename this to be column. Make another cube. I'll call it, um, I guess I'll just call it window. So I'll put it up to a height of two drag it right into the position where the window would be, use the player as reference. And yeah, that's basically the size that I want the window to be. Basically. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. So in the next video, I'm probably going to work on the window and finishing up this mid wall. And before we work on the top wall, we have to see how the column would interact with the top wall because usually when making something like this, I like to make the column like pretty nice, you know? So I want the column to have emphasis over the top wall. So I don't wanna make this top wall first and build the column around that. I wanna build the column, make that look nice and be happy with that design. And then go ahead and make the top wall and adjust those dimensions um, based on the column. So that's gonna be the order of the next couple of videos. We'll just finish modeling all of these modular pieces and start putting the scene together. So yeah. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. It's a nice, exciting process. So thank you guys all for watching and sticking with me so far in this series. So thank you again for the support, and I will see you guys next time.